Hello, my name is William I. Roth. I am a dermatologist practicing in Boynton Beach, Florida. And it is a pleasure to have this opportunity to present three cases that show that superficial radiation therapy is clinically superior to any other modality in treating specific skin cancers. Each individual must be evaluated and their skin cancers need to be evaluated to find the best treatment for that specific lesion. And in some of the lesions, there's absolutely no question that the superficial radiation therapy, or SRT, is superior. For radiation, dermatologists use a low energy unit. This is less damaging to the skin. It penetrates less deeply. And the principle of radiation is that you give this over a number of days, which are called fractions, a number of treatments. And it damages the cells. And the abnormal cells, which are the skin cancer, cannot recover. And the normal cells can, so you eventually destroy the skin cancer. And this was developed by dermatologists over 100 years ago. This is before the field of radiation oncology even existed. The first textbook on radiation therapy for skin cancer was written by Dr. McKee in 1921. My original partner, Dr. Victor H. Witten, had started his practice at New York University, NYU Skin and Cancer Unit, and was partners with Dr. Marion Salzberger. He provided this type of therapy many years ago, and I have some of the devices which he used in the old days. This is a Victor R meter. This is a meter that was used to check the output of radiation therapy machines. This is from 1941. Dr. Witten wrote extensively on this topic, and when I joined him in 1979, we were providing this therapy, but not on a unit such as these new units. I currently have the SRT100, which is a remarkable machine for providing superficial radiation therapy. This particular machine has its own calibration unit, which they call the rad check. You must put this in the unit before you start using it every day and go through approximately 20 minute check of your machine to make sure that the output is exact. And this is remarkably consistent. This is then logged. You keep a log. My machine essentially always checks out at 100% of expected output. This is a major breakthrough. These machines have entered the modern era of being able to provide very consistent and safe treatment. And with any treatment, safety must always be a priority when providing any type of treatment in medicine. When you provide this therapy, there is an applicator which is placed against the skin. And the applicator, which locks into the machine, the machine actually knows the size of the applicator that's in there by the way it locks in. This is focused against the person's skin. We make a customized lead shield for each person's skin cancer. The lead shield, the machine is placed against the lead shield. The only area that receives any radiation is that which is directly below the opening in the lead shield. And based on the energy, you control the depth of treatment. So this is an extremely reliable method for eliminating skin cancers. I'm looking forward to showing you the slides on these three patients that I have chosen for this presentation. The first patient came to see me specifically because I offer radiation therapy. He's 81, he's had heart disease with stents, on a strong blood thinner called Plavix. 
has diabetes, has had three past melanomas, and extensive surgeries, and he just did not want to be cut up anymore. And as you see in this picture, I have circled the two skin cancers that this gentleman has. He had a large nodular basal cell carcinoma on his nose, and next to it he had a nodular, well-differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. These were treated together at one time using 13 fractions. He had to come to the visit for 13 treatments. He had a remarkable outcome. But first, let's step back and consider what would have happened to this gentleman if these were treated surgically. Can you imagine cutting out this gigantic area on the side of his nose and cheek? Even with the best reconstructive surgeon, the best plastic surgeon, this gentleman would have had significant scarring, significant morbidity, significant discomfort, significant risk of infection, significant risk of bleeding. Some of the benefits of radiation therapy are that you can lead your normal lifestyle. If he wanted to play golf while he's receiving these treatments, he could play golf. And it requires minimal care with minimal risks. In this individual, I was treating a large volume of skin cancer. When you treat a large volume of skin cancer, it does damage the skin enough that it breaks down some of the skin. So as you can see in this picture, at the end of treatment, he did have some ulceration of the skin. It did require some extra visits to my office. I did provide for him ointments and bandages. But the remarkable thing about radiation can be how quickly you heal when you are giving superficial radiation therapy. In this situation, I'm showing you the picture only three weeks after the picture before, and you can see that his skin has healed remarkably. And that could be considered an understatement. This man now considers the area that I treated with the radiation is the best area of skin on his entire face. And in this situation, I think you have to feel that this is a miracle for this patient. That's why I chose this case. Nothing compares to this modality for this patient with this skin cancer. The next case I'm going to show is another challenging individual. This is an individual that has severe Parkinson's. He's in a wheelchair. I have to treat him in the wheelchair. You can see the picture of the back of his scalp. The two large circles were nodular basal cell carcinoma. He has a very significant tremor. So the issue here is if you did surgery on him, it would not be easy. You would have a moving target. Also, the sizes of the defects would create difficulty in closure. You'd have to use large tissue advancements or grafts. And in this case, as well as all the cases I'm showing today, I want to digress for a moment and just say that superficial radiation therapy in all three of these cases, besides being more effective, is cost effective. If these people had had the extensive surgical care required to close these defects, it would be far more costly to the system than providing this therapy. And the superficial radiation therapy, as compared to the therapy done with hospital-based machines, which are very expensive, our therapy is only a small fraction of the cost to the system as compared to these larger units. So not only are we getting superior results, we're getting it in a very efficient and cost-effective method. So in this individual, I show you the setup because we had to use a special uh, head molded device for him to put his head into to hold it still and we had to take the arm of the radiation therapy unit and pin it against the skin cancer while he was in his wheelchair and tape it on to the lead shield so that we could provide this in a consistent and accurate manner which we did and I show you these pictures 
afterwards. And it is another miraculous treatment. There is no evidence of where he even had the skin cancers. There's no scar. He had no morbidity, no problems with this. He got a little bit of pinkness of the skin, the skin cancers disappeared. I can only tell you this was another very happy patient. The third case that I'm going to present to you is another gentleman, actually a healthcare provider, with a lesion on his scalp. And it was a large lesion. You can see that it's next to a scar. There's a white area next to it, which when you see the last picture, you'll be able to compare and see exactly where the area that I treated was because the area is going to disappear. But I actually did two biopsies of this because it was so large, I wanted to make sure that all of this was skin cancer. And both biopsies came back as well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. A very tight scalp, even though he's only 74. I treated him with 12 fractions, meaning he received 12 applications of radiation therapy with this machine. He had a fantastic response and my final picture shows 16 months after the completion of therapy that his skin is absolutely smooth and even with a magnifying glass you would not be able to find that he had any treatment. Let's compare this to the alternative form of treatment. If this had been cut out, for example if he had been treated with Mohs, and I provide Mohs therapy myself, you would have created a very large defect and you would have had only two choices for closing this defect. You would have to have made a very long cut to do an advancement of tissue to close the defect or a very large graft. In both of these incidences it would have been painful. He would have had scarring, meaning the morbidity of the procedure would have been very significant as compared with radiation therapy. And it would have been much more expensive than having me treat him with radiation therapy. We're talking about a therapy that is wonderful for the patient and also cost effective. And in, in completing my presentation to you, I would like to say that dermatologists, we are the experts in skin cancer. We are the experts in evaluating the patient. We know the biology, we know the pathology, we know the patient's health and other issues that relate to how much the patient can tolerate. We've studied the science and the physics. We know superficial radiation therapy. This is an essential therapy. It's essential that this therapy grow in the United States and be utilized more because it's only in the last several years that these high-tech, very safe units for providing this therapy have been available. You know, we are going to be old someday ourselves. We are going to get skin cancers like this. And you have to ask yourself, are you going to really want to be cut up and have giant surgeries? Are you going to be, or will you want to be treated with something like this? where the skin cancer simply goes away. There are elements even within my own field, surgical dermatologists that don't like radiation therapy because it reduces the amount of patients receiving surgery. But that is not the issue. The issue is what is better for the patient. And after seeing these three examples, there is no question absolutely no question that for selected patients nothing comes close, nothing compares to superficial radiation therapy. So I'm hoping that all of you will become supporters of this modality and help to ensure that it grows and that it is available to individuals throughout the United States. Thank you for this opportunity to present these cases.